Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to our Saturday morning Dhammapada study session. Uh, I'm going to uh, bring the presentation uh, to the screen. Until then, uh, please take some deep breaths and uh, do some, spend some mindful moments. Be with the breath <laughs> and relax. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so here we go. Okay. All right, uh, so let us begin the session by uh, paying our respect and homage to the Buddha and also by taking refuge in the Buddha, Dhamma, the Sangha and by observing the five precepts. Let us recite together. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Buddha Saranang Gachami Dhamma Saranang Gachami Sanghan Saranang Gachami Dutiyam Pi Buddhan Saranang Gachami Dutiyam Pi Dhamman Saranang Gachami Dutiyam Pi Sanghan Saranang Gachami Tatiyam pe buddhan saranang gachami. Tatiyam pe dhamman saranang gachami. Tatiyam pe sanghan saranang gachami. Now the Pantasila, the five precepts. Panati pata viramani sikha padang samadhyami. Adinadana viramani sikha padang samadhyami. Kami sumichachara viramani. Sikha padang samadhyami. Musavada viramani. Sikha padang samadhyami. Suramiraya majapamadatana. Veramani Sikha Padang Samadhyami Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu
Okay, so <clears throat> last week we started with uh, uh, another uh, chapter of the Dhammapada, uh, chapter number 11, uh, known as Jara Vagga. Uh, this uh, chapter uh, deals uh, with uh, the one of the uh, truths and the realities of uh, our life and the nature of the sansara, the cycle of life, which is uh, aging, getting old. And uh, this chapter uh, actually deals with the reality of our life. And <laughs> uh, when we uh, look at the reality, uh, the truth of life, it may not sound pleasant. <laughs> uh, I have to uh, give you the warning. And uh, this is, again, not about the optimism or pessimism. Uh, Buddha talks about the, uh, the reality, the truth. Uh, this is the uh, realistic uh, teaching. Uh, I think this is part of uh, what we uh, call, there is a teaching, uh, it's called Sanya Vipalasa. The distorted, which is, Sanya means uh, perception, Vipalasa means distorted. So sanya vipalasa means distorted perception. And uh, when, when we look at the things with the distorted perception, that's where uh, things go wrong in our life. Uh, uh, but here uh, we are seeing impermanence as impermanence, uh, uh, pain as pain, what is not myself as not myself, and what is uh, um, uh, whatever the truth it is, then we see the truth as it is. And uh, so it would help us uh, to understand the true nature of life. And it will uh, help us not get attached to uh, anything attachment is the uh, is the source, the root cause of of suffering, as you all know. So we started with the um, first uh, verse, gatha of the uh, Jaravaga. Konu hasu kimanando nichang pajalite sati andakare na onadha padi pangna gavesata. What is laughter? What is joy when the world is ever burning? Shrouded by darkness, would you not speak the light? Or oh, trapped in darkness, uh, seek, uh, not the light. And uh, Dampada verse number 147, and the Jarawaga verse number two. Pasachitta katam bimbang arukhayang samasitang aturang bahu sankapang yasa natti dhuang titi. Behold this beautiful body, a mass of souls, a heaped up lump, deceased, much thought of, in which nothing lasts, nothing persists. We read the story of Sirima, which highlights the teaching Behold the true nature of the body. And then we read the Dampada verse number 148 and the Jaravaga verse number three. Parijinnan midang rupang roga nidhang pabhangurang bhijjati puti sandehu mananantam hijivitan. Thoroughly worn out is this body, a nest of diseases, perishable. This putrid mass breaks up, truly life ends in death. We read the story of Nan Uttara, which highlights the teaching, life ends in death. And lastly, we read the Dhampada verse number 149 and the Jarawag verse number four. Yani mani apatthani alapu neva sarade kapo takani atini tani diswana karati. 
like God's cast away in autumn, are these uh, dove hued bones? What pleasure is there in looking at them? We read the story of Adhimanika monks, uh, which has a teaching what delight in seeing white bones. Okay, so today we are going to uh, read uh, some more verses uh, from the uh, same chapter with some background stories. Again, I have to uh, uh, tell you that uh, these verses uh, deal with the true nature of <laughs> our own body and everything. Okay, so Dampada verse number 150, uh, Jaravagga verse number 5. Atinang nagarang katang mamsa lohita lepanang yatta jaracha machu cha mano makko cha ohito. Okay, let's learn some Pali uh, words from this verse. Atinang of bones. Ati means bone and atinang of bones. Nagarang, a city, katang is built. Uh, Mamsa lohit lepanang, plastered with flesh and blood. Yatta where jaracha di decay, machucha death. Mano, pride, makocha, ingratitude to, ohito, are uh, deposed. So, which means, yatta, jaracha, machucha, mano, cha, makocha, ohito, mamsa, lohita, lepanang, atinang, katang, nagarang. Of bones is this city made. Plastered with flesh and blood, herein I store decay, death, conceit, and uh, distraction. <coughs> so when it says the city is the is talking about the is referring to the body. So this body is made uh, with flesh and blood, and so in this very body stored decay, death, conceit, and attraction. Um, so there's a background story of Nan Rupananda, also known as Janapada Kailani. Uh, this is another interesting story. I think how people um uh, become so proud of themselves the pride conceit ego uh, these things make people stay away from the truth so uh, let us read the story of uh, the nan rupananda <clears throat> while residing at the jetavana monastery the buddha spoke this verse with reference to Janapada Kailani. Princess Janapada Kailani was the daughter in law of Gautami, the stepmother of Gautama, the Buddha. Because she was very beautiful, she was also known as Rupananda. She was married to Nanda, half brother of the Buddha. One day she pondered, My elder brother, who could have become a universal monarch, has renounced the world to become a monk. He is now a Buddha, Rahula, the son of my elder brother, and my own husband, Prince Nanda, have also become monks. My mother, Gotami, has also become a nun, and I am all alone here. So saying, she went to the monastery of some nuns and became a nun herself. Thus, she had become a nun not out of faith but only in imitation of others and because she felt lonely. Rupananda had heard from others that the Buddha often 
taught impermanence, unsatisfactoriness, and insubstantiality of the khandas, component things. So she thought he would uh, talk deprecatingly about her good looks if he should see her. And thus thinking she kept away from the Buddha. But other nuns coming back from the monastery kept talking in praise of the Buddha. So one day she decided to accompany other nuns through the monastery. <clears throat> the Buddha saw her and reflected, a thorn can only be taken out of it with a thorn. Rupananda being very attached to her body and being very proud of her beauty, I must take the pride and attachment out of her true beauty. So with his supernormal power, he caused an image of a very beautiful lady of about 16 years of age to be seated near him, fanning him. This young girl was visible only to Rupananda and the Buddha. When Rupananda saw the girl, she realized that compared to that girl, she herself was just like an old ugly crow compared to a beautiful white swan. Rupananda had a good look at the girl and she felt that she liked her very much. Then she looked again and was surprised to find out the girl had grown to the age of about 20. Again and again, she looked at the figure beside the Buddha and every time she noticed that the girl had grown older and older. Thus the girl turned into a grown up lady, then into a middle aged lady and a very old lady successively. Rupananda also noticed that with the arising of a new image, she, the old image disappeared. And she came to realize that there was a continuous process of change and decay in the body. With the coming of this realization, her attachment to the body diminished. Meanwhile, the figure near the Buddha had turned into an old uh, decrepit lady who could no longer control her bodily functions and was rolling in her own, etc. Uh, Finally, she died. Her body got bloated. Plus, uh, pus and maggots came out of the nine openings and crows, vultures were trying to snatch at the dead body. Having seen all this, Rupananda pondered, this young girl has grown old and decrepit and died in this uh, very uh, place under my own eyes. In, in the same way, my body will also grow old and wear out. It will be subject to disease and I will also die. Thus, she came to perceive the true nature of the khandas. At this point, the Buddha talked about the impermanence and unsatisfactoriness and the insubstantiality of the khandas. And Rupananda attained Sota Pati Fushan. So at the end of this story, the Buddha uttered this verse, Atinang Nagarang Katang Mansa Lohita Lepanang Yatta Jaracha Machocha Mano Makko Chohito. Of bones is this city made, plastered with flesh and blood. Herein I store decay, death, conceit, and detract detraction. <clears throat> so, uh, understanding the uh, three forms of existence uh, known as tilakkana is very important. Uh, anicca, dukkha, and anatta, impermanence, unsatisfactoriness and no self. Um, I think people get attached to the beauty, uh, which eventually um, makes people uh, become very proud of themselves, how people become 
so proud of their own body thinking is going to be lasting pretty beautiful forever i think this is the very reason why majority of the people uh suffer because they want to keep their body intact and not change looking beautiful all the time and and then once people have such a body they uh, this uh, typical uh, uh klesha or kilesa the defilement pride conceit uh, make people do the wrong things and uh and make them miserable <clears throat> but it's okay when um if you have a beautiful body if you're looking beautiful that's fine uh i think buddha is not against it uh, uh even if you want to be looking beautiful fashionable that is also fine there's nothing wrong with that but uh we we need this wisdom what is the wisdom though i have this beautiful body though i look beautiful now <laughs> you know as as i keep growing old i'm going to lose it is going to change so this reflection is is going to save us from suffering actually so and also because of the pride and conceit how people uh, misbehave uh, physically verbally and mentally so this reflection is going to uh help us become free from at least some miseries pain sufferings and <clears throat> and also as you can see in the graphic picture <laughs> uh at the end this is coming and we had to bury all the pride <laughs> with the money possessions properties we have accumulated Okay, let's move on. So next, down for the verse number one hundred fifty-one, and Jaravaga verse number six. Jiran tive rajaratha suchitta atho sari rampi jarang upeti satanch dhammo na jarang upeti santo havi sab sabbi pavi dayanti. Jiranti means disintegrate. Uh, we certainly Rajarata, the royal carriages. <clears throat> uh, Suchitta, the well decked. Ato, similarly. Sarirampi, Sariram Api, body two. Jarang, DK. Upeti reaches Satancha, Satan Plascha of noble person like the Buddha. Dhammo, the teaching. No, not. Jarang uh, DK. Upeti reaches Santo, those supremely disciplined persons. <clears throat> Have without any doubt, sabbi with good people, have dayanti communicate. So, what does it mean? Suchitta rajarata ve jiranti atho sarirang api jarang upeti satang dhammo cha jarang na upeti. Santo sabbi have pave dayanti. That means even ornamented royal chariots wear out. So too the body reaches old age. But the dhamma of the good grows not old. Thus indeed say the saints among themselves. So this is another wonderful teaching to keep in mind uh body is going to grow 
but the good things we do <laughs> will be uh, will not grow old, will not change. Uh, body, the is the physical body is going to go under change, is in flux, but the uh, the, uh, the good things we do is going to remain with us. Um, this also, this is in line with how people say, uh, this uh, saying in Pali of the Buddha, Rupang jirati machanang nama gotang na jirati. That means uh, the body is going to decay, uh, but not their name and tribe. Uh, so that means if you have a good name, uh, good family name, <laughs> like uh, it's going to be a lasting. Let's say Mother Teresa. <laughs> uh, Mother Teresa, uh, she's she's already dead. She said goodbye, but her name is still lasting. The Buddha died in the 6th century BCE. But his teachings are still here with us. We are talking about him. Jesus Christ, he died. But we are still talking about him. So, so in the same way, keeping this in mind, understand our own body is going to die, is going to decay. But our, our name will be lasting if you do good things for others. <laughs> Okay, so there is this story of Queen Mallika. <clears throat> um, while residing at the Jetavana monastery, the, the Buddha spoke this verse with reference to Mallika, Queen of King Pasena the of Kosala. One day, Mallika went into the bathroom to wash her face, hands, and feet. Her pet dog came in. As she was bending to wash her feet, the dog tried to have sex with her, and the queen appeared to be amused and somewhat pleased. The king saw this strange incident through the window from his bedroom. When the queen came in, he said angrily to the queen, Oh, you wicked woman, what were you doing with the dog in the bathroom? Do not deny what I saw with my own eyes. The queen replied that she was only washing her face, her hands, and her feet, and so was doing nothing wrong. Then she continued, But that room is very strange. If anyone went into that room, to one looking from this window, there would appear to be as two. If you do not believe me, O oh king, please go into that room and I will look through this window. So the king went into the bathroom. When he came out, Malika asked the king why he misbehaved with the she-goat in that room. The king denied it, but the queen insisted that she saw them with her own eyes. The king was puzzled, but being dim-witted, he accepted the queen's explanation and concluded that the bathroom was indeed very strange. From that time, the queen was full of remorse for having lied to the king and for having brazenly accused him of misbehaving with the she-god. Thus, uh, thus, even when she was approaching death, she forgot to think about the great unvalued uh, Unrivaled charities she had shared with her husband only remembered that she had been unfair to him. As a result of this, when she died, she was reborn in Niraya, hell. After her burial, the king in, intended to ask the Buddha where she was reborn. The Buddha wished to spare his feelings and also did not want him to lose faith in the Dhamma. So he willed that this question should not be put to him 
and King Pasena, they forgot to ask the Buddha. However, after seven days in Niraya, the queen was reborn in the Tusita Deva world. On that day, the Buddha went to King Pasenadi's palace for alms food. He indicated that he wished to rest in the court shed where the royal carriages were kept. After offering alms food, the king asked the Buddha where Queen Malika was reborn, and the Buddha replied, Malika has been reborn in the Tusita Deva world. Uh, hearing this, the king was very pleased and said, where else uh, could she have been reborn? She was also thinking of doing good deeds, always thinking what to offer to the Buddha on, on the next day. Venerable now that she is gone, I, your humble disciple, hardly know what to do. To him, the Buddha said, look at these carriages of your father and your grandfather. These are all burned down and lying useless. So also is your body, which is subject to death and decay. Only the Dhamma of the virtuous is not subject to decay. So at the end of this, uh, Buddha uttered this verse. <clears throat> Jiran Tive Rajarata Suchitta Atho Sari Rampi Jarang Upeti Satancha Dhammo Na Jarang Upeti Santo Have Sabbi Pave Dayanti. Even ornamented royal chariots wear out, so too the body reaches old age. But the Dhamma of the good grows not old, thus indeed say the saints among themselves. Decorated royal coaches perish, even so our bodies, the revered true Dhamma thrives. So from in this story, uh, one thing we have to be mindful, uh, no matter what we do, um, and uh, you know, we, uh, we could be cheating, we could be lying, uh, but we know what we are doing, and also sometimes we, we misunderstand. Um, and uh, at the end of our life, uh, whatever we have done physically, verbally, mentally, uh, just in case if we have done uh, bad things in the last moments of uh, our life. Uh, those uh, bad things, bad moments begin to surface. Uh, and we forget the good things we have, uh, we have done. So in, in this story, uh, uh, Queen Malika, uh, of course, she was a good lady, a good queen. She was doing a lot of good things. Uh, but in the, because she, uh, lied to her husband, the king, and she remembered that in the last moment. So that made her to have a short period of her journey in the hell, but then the good deeds saved her to come back to the heavenly world. <laughs> and also look at the graphic picture. Uh, this uh, everything is going to decay, but it's only the good things that will remain with us. Okay, let's uh, move on to the next uh, verse. Adapa the verse number one hundred fifty-two, Jarawag verse number seven. Appasutayang puriso bali badho vajirati. Mansani tasa vadhanti panya tasa navadhati. In fact, during our training days, uh, our teachers used to uh, remind us this verse. <laughs> we always know this. You're going to love this one. Appasutayang, appasuto plus ayang, who has scarcely heard plus this, meaning you have not having heard much. 
Puriswa person, Bali Badhova, Bali Badho plus Eva, Bull plus like, like Bull, Jirati grows or decays, Mamsani muscles, Tasa his, Vadhanti grow, Panya wisdom, Tasa his, Na not, Vadhati grows. So what does it mean? Apasuto ayang puriso bali badho iva jirati tasa mangsan vadhanti tasa panya na vadhati. The man of little learning grows all like the ox. His muscles grow, his wisdom grows not. So our teachers used to say this to us all the time. <laughs> Just by eating and uh, without the learning is uh, going to help you like become uh, a bull, <laughs> big body, but no wisdom. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> uh, here's a story of Venerable Kaludai. While residing at the Jetavana Monastery, the, the Buddha spoke this verse with reference to Kaludai, a monk with little intelligence. The story goes that Venerable Kaludai used to go to a house where people were having a holiday and recite stanzas appro appropriate to a funeral, such as, they stand outside the walls. Likewise, he would go to a house where a funeral was in progress and instead of saying the appropriate words, they stand outside the walls. He would recite such holiday stances as almsgiving and piety. Or else <coughs> he would recite the jewel sutta containing such stances as whatever riches exist, either in this world or in the next. In fact, no matter where he went, even though he set out with the intention of saying one thing, he would invariably say something entirely different. Monks who heard him talk reported to the matter to the Buddha saying, Venerable, what is the use of Kaludayas going either to places where festivities are in progress or to places where funerals are in progress? Where the right thing should be said, he always says the wrong thing. The Buddha replied, monks, this is not the first time he has so spoken. In a previous existence, also he always said the wrong thing instead of the right thing. So saying, he told the following story. In times long gone by, there was a Brahmin named Agidatta who lived in Banaras. The Brahmin had a son named oops, uh, Somadatta Kumara, who waited upon the king. And Somadatta was the king's darling and delight. One day, one of his two oxen died. Thereupon, the Brahmin said to his son, Dear Somadatta, ask the king for a single ox and fetch him back to me. Somadatta thought to himself, if I make such a request of the king, he will think that I'm using my connection with him. So he said to his father, dear father, you go yourself and ask the king. Uh, Very well, dear son, take me with you. Then he taught his father the following stanza. I had two oxen, mighty king with which I plowed my field, but one of the two is dead. Pray give me another warrior prince. But when he went to the king and he said this, I had two oxen, mighty king with which I plowed my field, but one of the two is dead. Pray take my other warrior prince. At that time, the stupid Brahmin was Kaludai. 
so at the end of this uh, uh, story, the Buddha uttered this, Appasutayam puriso bali vaddho vajirati mausani tasa vaddhanti panya tasa navaddhati. The man of little learning grows all like the ox. His muscles grow, his wisdom grows not. I don't know whether you notice in his story, uh, he, he, the, the farmer had two oxen. <laughs> uh, so one died. So instead of asking for one more ox from the king, he was asking for a <laughs> prince, the king's son. <laughs> So, the, so that was uh, the stupidity of the of this of, the, of Kaludai. So that's why even in this lifetime, uh, let's say at the at the wedding story, at the wedding blessing ceremony, he would talk about let's say the death. At the death, funeral, he would talk about <laughs> the wedding, <laughs> something like that. So, <clears throat> so that's why I, um, we have to, Buddha encouraged uh, to uh, learn various subjects, by the way. It's called Bahusutta. We need to be Bahusutta, much heard, very erudite, knowledgeable. It's not just one thing. Okay, so let's go to next two verses. Next two verses are the have the same background story. Dhampada verse number 153, Jaravagda verse number eight. Anek jati sansarang sandha visang anep gavi santo dukha jati punapunan. Aneka jati, numerous births, samsarang, endless cycle of existence, sandha visang, traveled, anibhisang, without encountering, uh, gahakarakan, uh, the house builder, <clears throat> gavisanto, seeking, dukkha, is sorrowful, jati, birth, uh, punapuna, over and over or repeatedly. So that means punapuna, jati, dukkha, gahakarakan, gavisanto, anek jati, sansarang, anebisang, sandha, visang. Through many a birth, I wandered in samsara, seeking but not finding. The builder of the house, sorrowful is it to be born again and again. And the Dampada was number 154, Jarawa goes number 9. Gahakaraka dittosi punagehangna kahasi sabbate pasuka bhagga gahakutang visankatang. Visankara gatang chitang tanhanang kaima jaga. So gahakaraka, O house builder, ditto se ditto asi, you are seen. Puna again, gehang house, na kahase will not build. Sabba all, te your. Pasuka supports, Bhagga are destroyed. Gahakutang, the structure of the house. Visankatang is demolished. Visankara to stop being conditioned. Chittang, mind. Tanhanang, of the urge, cravings. Kayang, the cessation. Ajaga has been achieved. So what does it mean? Gahakaraka ditto asi puna gehang na kahasi te sabha pasuka bhaga gahakutang visankatang 
Chittan Visankara Gatan Tanhanan Kayan Ajaga. O house builder, you are seen. You shall build no house again. All your rafters are broken. Your rich pole is shattered. My mind has attained the unconditioned. Achieved is this end of craving. Uh, these are the two verses actually uttered by uh, the Buddha uh, after becoming enlightened. Uh, I think, as you can see, Buddha was seeking the builder of the house. Uh, what is this house? The Pancha Kanda fire aggregates, the person, the person whom we call the person, uh, he or she, these are basically the fire aggregates. Um, and it's the craving. Craving is the builder. Uh, and Buddha found, found him the builder, uh, the craving. The, the, this builder could be the, the man or woman. Uh, the crave, everybody has craving. So the Buddha was looking for this builder and one thing he realized was um, in numerous life in the past, he was seeking the builder of the house. And in this journey, uh, he has to be reborn numerous times. And he understood one thing, uh, being reborn over and over again is really painful because you have to always go through this aging, sickness and death, and they bring a lot of pains and sufferings. So finally, he found the builder, the, the craving. So then he destroyed the craving and he became completely free from the cycle of life. So, uh, Venerable Ananda uh, also uttered these verses in front of the Buddha. Uh, this uh, religious instruction was spoken by the Buddha while he sat at the foot of the Bodhi tree, tree of enlightenment, by way of solemn speech with Dana, and at a later time was recited to Venerable Ananda in answer to a question. For the Buddha sitting at the foot of the Bodhi tree before the sitting of sun, setting of sun, had overcome the force of Mara. In the first watch, draw away the darkness that veils previous states of existence. In the middle watch, acquired supernormal vision. And the last watch, out of pity for living beings, by focusing his thoughts on dependent originations, and meditating on it, both forwards and backwards. At sunrise, he obtained complete enlightenment. Thereupon, he breathes uh, uh, it forth a solemn declaration common to countless number of Buddhas. So this, um, even if you would like to, if you're seeking who is the, uh, creator or builder, maker of my own suffering, uh, my own problems, then you, you should understand it's your own craving. It's your own attachment, it's your own desire. It's the creator, maker of all the troubles, sufferings. So long in samsara, the house build I sought, never did I find. Birth or recurrence is painful. House builder, you are shattered. You shall build no more. My mind's gone beyond craving.
craving is also what we call tanha. Tanha uh, literally means um, thirst. That's the literal meaning. Thirst. Like I'm thirsty. At this moment, you feel like uh, you have enough, you're full. After a while, you're thirsty again. <laughs> So craving is also the same. But once we see the craving is the is the builder of uh, my life, your life, our life, the sansara, then once we choose to destroy the craving, uproot the craving, then uh, we can become free. In fact, in the Four Noble Truths, the first truth, the truth of suffering, and the second truth, uh, the, the truth of the cause of the suffering. Uh, so the, uh, the cause of the suffering is what Buddha called Tanha. Uh, karma tanha, the uh, cravings for sensual pleasure, bhava tanha, uh, craving uh, for existence, vibhava tanha, craving for non existence. So there are three forms of cravings. So these are the cravings that keep building the house and the samsara. And to destroy this craving, one has to practice. Of course, the, there's a, the third truth, the truth of the end of suffering, the freedom, which is nirvana. Uh, and the way to uh, destroy this craving is to follow the Part that that is the fourth truth, the the truth of the path that leads to the end of suffering. That is the noble eightfold path, Arya Attangika Magga. If we can continue to practice the noble eightfold path, it will help us get rid of cravings, remove suffering, destroy suffering completely. And uh, it can be done also uh, through meditation, especially seeing the uh, the triyakana, understanding the three forms of existence. Uh, everything is impermanent. Everything is unsatisfactory. Uh, what we uh, call I mean myself, that is not my I, me, myself. And then there comes through wisdom. With this wisdom, we can let go. So it is the letting go of uh, the craving that brings the bliss. That's why uh, Ajahn Chah uh, tells the world, uh, oops. Uh, Ajahn Chah tells the world, if you let go a little, you will have little peace. If you let go a lot, you will have a lot of peace. If you let go completely, then your struggle with the world will come to an end. So, uh, from these verses, we learn, if you can let go, uh, uh, pride, conceit, uh, mana. Uh, and attachment cravings, we will feel very uh, relieved. <laughs> so to let go of all this, we have to see the truth, the reality of our own body. That's why this chapter is dealing with jara, the aging. 
<laughs> True nature of our own body. All right, so uh, that's it for today. Uh, so I'm going to do a blessing. Please uh, receive the blessings. Bhavatu sabba mangalang rakhantu sabba devata sabba buddhanu bhavene sada sati bhavantu te Bhavatu sabba mangalang rakhantu sabba devata Sabba dhamma no bhavene sada sotte bhavantu te Bhavatu sabba mangalang rakhantu sabba devata Sabba sangha no bhavene sada sotte bhavantu te by the power of the Buddha, Dhamma, and the Sangha, may you all be well, happy, and peaceful. May you all be free from all sufferings and pains. May no harm come to you. May no difficulties come to you. May no problems come to you. Finally, may you all experience the happiness, the bliss of Nibbana. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. All right, so thank you. I will see you all next Saturday. Until then, be well. And Suki Hodu.